we're, we've thought about how to have these sessions, these, these confirmation sessions in a, in a way that we have six sessions, you know, throughout the year, and uh, there's an awful lot to teach about the, about the Catholic faith, a lot more than we can, than we can do in, in six sessions. But, uh, so we've tried to select uh, a way to, to get some of the basic points and then sort of build on one another. And you may have noticed that we didn't begin, we didn't begin with the Bible, did we? What did we begin with the first session? Anybody remember what the first session was about? The creed. Remember, we talked about the creed and baptism. huh? And today, we're talking about the scriptures and prayer. And there's a reason for that, and I want to, I want to just kind of try to make a little point. I want you to kind of keep that in your mind if you can. There's a, there's a, there's a lesson in that order, and that is that the first thing to be told uh, is if I go to the jail, for example, and I, I, I preach to a group of prisoners that many of them have never heard the gospel before, I'm going to first, I'm going to give them the faith of the church. I'm going to tell them this is what we believe. as just the, the faith that, that, we, that we talked about last time, the, the creed. This is what we believe. And then uh, I'm going to say where it comes, I'm going to try to illustrate it, and I'll take out the Bible, and I'll say, and this is the story. And this is what were the lessons that we draw from it. These are these is this is what underlies our our faith, huh? But uh, the way to make that real is to pray it. All of this, the faith that we talked about last week, the scriptures that Father Jeff just talked about, if they are, if they remain written down in a book and just uh, heard uh, once a week, then they're they might as well forget about it. Uh, it's not going to be real. It has to be something that we take the faith. And the scripture and the word of God as it is, and we make it our own. And how do we make it? How do I make it mine and not anybody else's? How do I make it mine? By prayer. Prayer. Uh, that's why the, the prayer, and that's why one of the questions that we had, you know, in the discussion questions is who do I know that lives the word of God, that hears the word of God and lives it? And this, for you, uh, all of you at your age, uh, as you as you come into you know to be adults now, there's the the thing I would really really urge you to think about that. You don't need so much to talk about it in a group, as to think about the people that you know in your life that you would like to be like, that you would like to who how would, who do you want to be when you grow when you get older, and why. And what about those people in your, maybe sometimes it's our grandparents, our uncles, or aunts that are really good people. And a lot of times we can trace that down to the fact that they, they're, they're people that are willing to, they have room for God in their life. Huh? They have room for God in their life. In fact, it seems to make a lot of room. Uh, and that's where I want to kind of start on this, this uh, subject of prayer, is that when we think about prayer, we think about it ordinarily as something that I give to God, right? A gift that I give to God. Because I spend my time in prayer, like we just offered the rosary now. This is something that we gave to God, we might say. But really, uh, I want to suggest something very important, uh, and that is that it's exactly the other way around, that prayer is not our gift to God, it's God's gift to us. And let me illustrate that by turning to the scriptures uh, right away to, to show uh, how we, how we immediately, notice how I instinctively picked up the Bible to try to illustrate my point. It, instantly, I want to make reference to what God has, has instinctively, I know that I can find uh, an answer, so to speak, that God has already given us in the Word of God. And sure, if I look, I can find it. Uh, you're all familiar with this story. It's in the book of Exodus, the second book of the Bible. When Moses, uh, it says uh, chapter 3 of Exodus, if you ever want to look it up later, Moses was uh, keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro. He was out shepherding these sheep all by himself. Uh, and he led his flock to the west side of the wilderness. So he's out in the desert. And he came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush was burning. Yet it was not consumed. Bush kept burning up, it kept burning, kept burning, but it didn't, nothing happened, it just kept burning. And Moses said, I will turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. 
When the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses, and he said, here I am. Then he said, do not come near. Put off your shoes from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. And he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Well, this is a pretty dramatic and very, very, very famous experience that's you know, known throughout the world for thousands of years. This isolated experience of Moses the shepherd out in the middle of the desert, uh, certainly a very ordinary person. He, he wasn't at all famous at the time. And I just want to draw our attention to a couple things. This, to my mind, this, when I think about what prayer is, this is what, what I think it is. Notice Moses didn't go say to his father-in-law Jethro, uh, Pop, uh, I'm going out in the desert today and I'm going to take the sheep, but I'm mainly going out to, to, to see God. I'm going out to meet God. He didn't say that. He didn't think that. He just had an ordinary day. He was doing his work. And then God sets up, he takes him by surprise. He burns this bush and gets Moses' attention. What is that? He's curious. Something very strange is happening over there. I think I'll go closer. Something mysterious. Something that kind of goes beyond my mind's ability to explain it. Maybe I'll go closer. Something draws me to this. God drew him to himself. And then he speaks. Notice who speaks first. Does Moses? No. God speaks first. Come no nearer. Take off your shoes. This is holy ground. Now notice what's ho where holy ground is. Holy ground is out there in the middle of the desert. It's holy ground is wherever God speaks to you and to me. Holy ground could be in your bedroom and should be whenever you try to come into the presence of the God of Israel, the God of Jesus Christ. But he calls Moses by name. He calls him Moses and he says, here I am. Now there's, there's the key point in prayer is whether or not Moses is going to answer God's invitation. God invites Moses to come and talk with him and listen to him. And Moses says, here I am. There's, that's the decision to pray. Because he didn't have to. He could have just taken off. He could have run out of fear. So, no, I don't want anything to do with this. And I think a lot of people do. A lot of people do at that point. A lot of people head for the hills. Why? And you, you have the reason why. Because Moses said, when, when God says, I am the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and, and Jacob, what happens? Moses hid his face because he was afraid. Afraid. The idea that God might come and, and want to talk to me all by myself, that he might want to tell me who he is, that he might be interested in me and in my life, this is terrifying. I don't know if you've ever felt that, uh, that terror, but I certainly have. And I, we don't get it in this story. Uh, we have to go look ahead as to why this is so, why this is so fearful to us is because God may ask me to do things 